Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, good evening. Uh, I'm actually standing here waiting for my lines. <laughs> I know enough, however, to say that I'm Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Welcome to the first annual International Jazz Day. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to pay tribute to America's greatest contribution to music with a monumental extravaganza. Over the past 24 hours, people around the world have united to commemorate International Jazz Day. On the campuses of public schools, colleges and universities, at libraries, performing arts venues, community centers, and jazz clubs, there has been a spirited variety of concerts, education programs, seminars, lectures, book readings, public jam sessions, master classes, photo expositions, dance recitals, film and documentary screenings, plays, theater presentations, and spoken word performances featuring rap and poetry. Designated by the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, otherwise known as, you know, UNESCO, and its 195 member states, International Jazz Day is the first initiative conceived and created by its newest goodwill ambassador, my friend Herbie Hancock. This is in partnership with the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz. Tonight, we shine the spotlight on jazz musicians, singers, and composers from all corners of the globe. To help us celebrate in grand style, we have assembled a phenomenal group of over three dozen artists from our countries, including Australia, Benin, Brazil, Cameroon, China, Cuba, India, Japan, Israel, Lebanon, the Netherlands, South Africa, and the United States. <laughs> Joining us for the festivities are some of the world's leading blues, classical, and pop artists. So get ready for an extraordinary night. I guarantee you will never forget. Before we begin, we are honored to have a few words from the Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon. Ambassador Susan Rice, permanent representative of the United States of America to the United Nations. Madame Irina Bokova, Director General of UNESCO. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the United Nations for the first ever celebration of International Jazz Day. I thank UNESCO, the United States Mission, and the Theolonius Monk Institute of Jazz for making this remarkable event possible. A special word of appreciation to Herbie Hancock, a UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador, for his role in getting this day off to such a great start. Many wonderful jazz musicians have played at the United Nations over the years. After all, the UN flag is kind of blue. What an incredible lineup of performance tonight. The United Nations is honored to have you here. I think I speak for everyone when I say I'm in the mood to sing, sing, sing. <laughs> I thank the musicians for being so generous with the talent and time. Jazz is an American invention that has become part of the world's global artistic and cultural heritage. Jazz knows no boundaries. It takes us around the world from April in Paris to autumn in New York, and from a night in Tunisia to Ipanema and Borderland. Jazz brings peoples and nations together. On International Jazz Day, 
We want the powerful message of jazz to resonate around the world. To all of you who took the A train to be here tonight, <laughs> thank you for coming and enjoy the show. Please welcome the United States Permanent Representative to the United Nations, Ambassador Susan Rice. Good evening. Happy First International Jazz Day. Many, many thanks. Many, many thanks to Irina Bokova of UNESCO for supporting this extraordinary project. Thank you also to Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz, and above all, to the amazing Herbie Hancock, whose idea it was, whose idea it was to create International Jazz Day. He had a dream for this music and for us all. He stuck with it. And in the past few days, in Paris, New Orleans, and now here, that dream has come true. It's particularly fitting that this day falls at the end of the United States Presidency of the United Nations Security Council. That's because the origins and early development of jazz are quintessentially American. And when the United States wanted to show its best abroad, we have often sent jazz. The U.S. dispatched the famous jazz ambassadors around the world, a tradition that continued with the Rhythm Road program and now with American Voices. When the voice of America used to beam jazz across the Iron Curtain, the DJ at the time said, people there, and I quote, love jazz because they love freedom. Like democracy itself, jazz has structure, but within it, you can say almost anything. In fact, America's jazz ambassadors were pushing on a very open door. Jazz became the world's music long ago. Out of South Africa, we've had Miriam Makeba, Hugh Masekela, and Abdullah Ibrahim. Right after World War II ended, young Toshiko Akiyoshi heard a recording of Teddy Wilson doing Sweet Lorraine, and one of the great jazz careers was born. In 1953, Bud Schrank and Lorindo Alameda brought Brazilian sounds together with jazz. There is by now a rich tradition of Nordic jazz, there's South Asian jazz, there's Russian jazz, and Chinese jazz. So now, jazz is everyone's music. As Charlie Parker once said, music is your own experience, your thoughts, your wisdom. If you don't live it, it won't come out of your horn. The musicians tonight bring together so much experience and so much wisdom. We all can't wait to hear what comes out of their horns. Thank you to these brilliant musicians, and thank you all so much for joining us. Enjoy the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, the Director General of UNESCO, Arena Bokova. So, 
Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure for me to be here in New York to celebrate the first ever International Jazz Day. This is the city of Bebop, the place where the birth of the cool by My Miles Davis was crafted. My first words are to thank UNESCO's Goodwill Ambassador, my dear friend Herbie Hancock, the Thelonious Monk Institute, and the United Nations Mission who made this day possible. I want to thank also the Secretary General because he's pronounced the very important words for us. Born in this country, in the United States, jazz now is owned by the world. Jazz is a music that makes the most of humanity's diversity, that crosses all borders and brings people together. Jazz is not something that you only hear. It is something you feel deep inside that bursts forth in joyous expression. Ella Fitzgerald once said, I sing like I feel, and we feel it as we listen. So there is hardly a better school of sharing and of cultural dialogue. This music that has been born in the 19th century, but the world itself is just 100 years old. It appeared for the first time, the world jazz, in print in April 1912, in the Los Angeles Times, in a column strangely devoted to baseball. Researchers are still baffled over the origins of this world. Some say jazz stands for vigor, energy, magnetism, verve, happiness. For UNESCO, jazz is another word for life. It carries meanings to all societies, on all continents, Jazz renews itself every time it is played. It is the sound of freedom. Jazz has provided the soundtrack for struggles for dignity and human rights. It remains today a force for positive social transformation. And now we must continue to voice this message of dialogue and freedom. This is why UNESCO created International Jazz Day. As I speak here, people across the world are celebrating the, across the globe, from Algeria to Australia, from Uruguay to Lebanon. This shows the power of jazz to bring people together, to enhance human dignity, to strengthen the ties of peace. For sharing their passion, for this generos generosity, I wish to thank all our partners and every artist here today. From sunrise in New Orleans to sunset in New York, UNESCO is putting this message out to people everywhere to join the band. One of the most stunning expressions of the cultural, uh, cultural expressions of the 20th century, jazz is already capturing the spirit of the 21st century. So in this spirit, I invite you all to enjoy the show and happy International Jazz Day. Recognizing the impact of the music far beyond the melodies and illustrating that we have more in common with each other than our differences, Jazz has long been used as an important diplomatic tool. I can think of no better way to begin our concert, and we are going to, <laughs> than with a living legend, an American vocalist who has sold millions of records worldwide and has won 17, count them, 17 Grammy. Please give a warm welcome to the incomparable Tony Bennett. Let someone start believing in you. Let him hold out his hand. 
Let him touch you. Watch what happens when someone who can look in your eyes and see into your heart. Let him find you and watch what happens. Cold. No, I won't believe your heart is cold. Maybe slow to warm on an evening such as this. Yes. Let someone with a deep love to give Give his deep love to you What magic you'll see Let someone give his heart Someone who cares like me Thank you On an evening such as this Yes, let someone With a deep love to give Give his deep love to you What magic you'll see Let someone give his heart Someone who cares like me Someone who cares like me firms go under I am not concerned with stocks and bonds that I've been burned with I love you and you love me and that's how it will always be and nothing else could ever mean a thing who cares what the public chatters loves the only thing that matters who cares if the sun fails to shine from above? Who cares what banks fell in Yonkers? As long as you've got a kiss that kind does, why should I care? Life is one long jubilee. As long as I care for you, and you really care for me. The great sergeant, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Great sergeant. Marshall Wood on the great big bass over here.
the sea and the land. He held all the stars in the palm of his hand. And they ran through his fingers like grains of sand. And one little star fell alone. Then the Lord God hunted through the wide night air for the little dark star on the wind down there. And he stated and promised he'd take special care so it wouldn't get lost no more. Now a man don't mind if the stars grow dim and the clouds blow over and darken him. As long as the Lord God's watching over them, keeping track how it all goes on. But I've been walking through the night and the day till my eyes get weary and my head turns gray sometimes I think maybe God's gone away forgetting the promise and the word he'd say and we're lost out here the stars, little stars, big stars, blowing through the night, and we're lost out here in the stars. Conductor, producer, arranger, film composer, trumpeter, and social activist. Please welcome 26 time Grammy Award winner Quincy Jones. Thank you. My goodness, what an occasion. Good evening, and I thank all of you for being here tonight uh, at the UN and watching around the world and joining us to celebrate this miracle. Jazz. That's a powerful word. It's America's only true indigenous art form. And as a jazz man at my core and a bebopper from the basement up, I cannot begin to tell you how honored I am to serve as co-host of this year's International Jazz Day concert. And I brought my brother from another mother, Herbie Hancock. <laughs> Also, the genius of Thomas Carter and UNESCO and that beautiful lady from Bulgari for doing this, you know. This is amazing. And God bless you all. God bless you all for having the wisdom and the heart to bring us together to recognize this amazing, great music form that's so dear to my heart. But what is jazz, really? Jazz as we know it today was born in the shadows of the Emancipation Proclamation in the American Civil War and was a marriage of two seemingly different cultures thrust together by the laws of Jim Crow. A union of the vocal power and the polyrhythmic drum beats that the newly freed slaves maintained from the African culture and the European influence of the mulatto house servants who had been trained as conservatories and they were introduced to the Africans saxophones, clarinets, trumpets, and trombones, an instrument which the Africans had never seen before. That's where the name Sidney Bechet and Kid Ory started. 
And I can see the two of them getting together when in 1906 or 8, whenever it was Jim Crow started, saying, you're all black now. You've got to make those trumpets and saxophones sound like voices. For instance, like a man like Adolf Sax of Belgium, he actually created the saxophone in 19, 1846. He had no idea what would happen later when his instrument got in the hands of Chewberry, Coleman Hawkins, Charlie Parker, and Coltrane. He had no idea at all. <laughs> and when jazz was dismissed by those who didn't understand it, or most probably feared it, as I quote from the 1943 edition of the U.S. War Department Education Manual publication, EM603. Discovering Music is the name of this book by the government. A Course in American Appreciation, A Course in Music Appreciation. Quote, some may start with enthusiasm for music of the jazz type, but they cannot go far there, for jazz is peculiarly of an inbred, feeble stock race, incapable of incapable of development in any case. The people for whom it is meant could not understand it if it did develop. These are their words. Jazz is sterile. It's all right from fun or mild anodyne like tobacco, but its lack of rhythmic variety necessitated by its special purpose, its brevity, its repetitiveness, and lack of sustained development, together with the fact that commercial reasons prevent it being, as a rule, very well written. All market as a side issue. This is what they said now, 1943, having not, next to nothing to do with serious music. And consequently, it has pr proved itself entirely useless as a basis for developing the taste of the amateur. Jazz is too thick in its limitations, too narrow in its variety and quality of its content to be able to maintain itself long in a world of flux and change. Influential as it has been as a factor in the cultivation, a present-day taste, it can hardly be looked upon as a real basis for the development of American musical idiom. How do you like that? He continues, he says, the ambitious listener might better start from the levels of Chopin's melodious piano music or Grieg or Tchaikovsky's gorgeous colorfulness. Anyway, and just 13 years later, 1956, Adam Clayton Powell and the same government sent Dizzy Gillespie's orchestra, where I was proud to be the musical director and played trumpet on a State Department tour, goodwill tour of Iran, Pakistan, Syria, North Africa, then to South America. The men and women who created it and the world wholeheartedly rejected the hypothesis. When I first began performing in 1945 in Seattle, Washington, it was as if I had been bitten by a vampire and the music was the blood that was sustained. <laughs> I was hooked. Ray Charles, I'm 14, he's 16. There was no going back. Ray Charles played alto like Charlie Parker then. It was tw music 24 hours a day, 365 a year. That's how powerful it was. From Chicago to Seattle, New York to the Chitlin Circuit twice a year with Lionel Hampton, Sweden to Paris, Tokyo to the Middle East, and jazz opened a whole brand new world for me. I wanted to be a gangster originally from Chicago. Changed my mind. <laughs> jazz is like a beautiful mistress who makes you do whatever you have to do to be with her. <laughs> and so far, my affair with her has lasted more than 65 years, and that's just the beginning. <laughs> got more. Thank you. You know, people forget, I get dissed sometimes by some of the snobs that say, he's selling out, man. Please. With Thriller, you think I'm ashamed of that? <laughs> I don't think so. And if you pay attention to it, <laughs> the second song on Thriller is a song called Baby Be Mine. Please do 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 It's Coltrane. <laughs> Baby Be Mine. <laughs> so we sneak it in the back window or the front door. <laughs> <laughs> and my beautiful teacher in Paris, Nadia Boulanger, possibly the greatest composition teacher in history. She mentored Igor Stravinsky, taught Leonard Bernstein, Aaron Copeland, Philip Glass. And she once told me, I have to treat you guys differently because the jazz musicians, they shack up with music for us and then they court it marry it later, <laughs> which is true. And in that time, I've seen her power firsthand, the power to make men forget their differences and come together to make one's heart swell to the point 
where it feels like it's going to jump out of your chest, make you laugh, cry, jump, dance, unite, think, and love. And it's the power that does not recognize color, class, religion, or geographic boundaries. It is universal. And along with the mass, it may be the only absolute power in the world. Left brain, right brain. The best, emotion and intellect. Throughout its existence, jazz has left an indelible handprint on America's history and is a central thread woven through the fabric of our country continuously, morphing itself and giving birth to a host of other musical genres with like the introduction of the Fender Bass in 1953. It would not only become the bedrock of pop, R&B, and rock, but as a roadmap culture to our culture. And everywhere you go in the world, Ben Webster said to me when I was 18 years old, Wherever you go in the world, young lady, he said, step into my office, let me pull your coat. <laughs> eat the food that the real people eat. Everywhere you go, listen to the music they listen to, and learn 30 or 40 words in every language. And I followed him very obediently. Unfortunately, every country in the world knows more about our music than our kids do. And that's rapidly changing. Through events just like tonight, it's going to be a big change. You're all part of that. We're just beginning. Jazz compositions will become America's waltzes without fail. It's been jazz and the genres that it spawned. That has been universally embraced by every culture on this planet, the Esperanto. There's a reason that every musician in the world can communicate with another. It's because they speak the universal language, that's music. And more times than not, that music is jazz. J-A-Z-Z. -Z. And in the global landscape that we live in today, where ideas are exchanged with the stroke of a thin key or a smartphone or computer, what better way to transcend geographical and cultural boundaries and build bridges through the, than through the loved, beloved and shared love of jazz? I believe in the depths of my heart that as long as we foster an environment where this exchange can take place, an environment such as today's, we will find ourselves in a more tolerant, understanding, and peaceful world. I traveled over six, 65 years around the world all of my life. And you've got to go to know. And I know this to be true because I witnessed it firsthand on many memorable occasions. And we celebrate the great legacy of this jazz today. Many of the men and women who are responsible for it are unfortunately no longer with us. But I know that there's one killer jam session going up there in heaven right now. My Lord, Miles and Ray Charles, Lord. Woo! And I believe that 100 years from now, when people look back at the 20th century, they will view Louis Armstrong, Duke, Basie, Bird, Miles, and Dizzy as our Mozarts, Bach, Chopin's, and Tchaikovsky's. It's our classical music. You've got to remember that. That's right, jazz in the word, mortal words of Duke Ellington, I love her madly. And I hope that one day America will recognize what the rest of the world has already has, that our indigenous music jazz is the heart and soul of all popular music, and we cannot afford to let this legacy slip into obscurity. Nor can we citizens of the world ignore the moral responsibility to honor the artists who created it by compensating them for their contributions to this great universal art form. We've got to do that. In closing, from the bottom of my heart I say, because I'll fight for this until I leave here, Jazz is the personification of transforming overwhelmingly negative circumstances into freedom, friendship, hope, and dignity. And in the lexicon of this great art form, that may be no more important and better innovative than my friend and brother Miles Davis, the maestro of the trumpet. Miles personified cool, it's bad, <laughs> my man, and defined the essence of jazz, his genius having influenced every true musician who's come after him. And I was honored to have conducted his last album in Montreux with the legendary Gil Evans arrangement. And it was Miles and Quincy live in Montreux in 1993 with Claude Nobbs, who's here tonight. Miles, the Picasso of jazz. And I'm honored once again tonight to recognize the magnificence of Miles Davis and his contributions to the art in the power and spirit and joie de vivre that's jazz. Please give up the love for Miles' former bandmates and legends of jazz in their own right. Herbie Hancock, Ron Carter, Jack Tijanet, 
Wayne Shorter, performing Miles Davis' composition, Milestones. Give it up! Yeah, my brother. I love you. Thank you.
please welcome Thelonious Monk, Jr. Wow. 25 years ago, the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz was established to honor my father and help perpetuate the music that was his life's blood, his heart, his soul. My dad believed in mentoring young people, and I remember days and nights when our apartment was filled with future jazz luminaries, learning their craft at the feet of their masters. I have to say that uh, when I was a little boy, the house really was filled with people like Miles Davis and Max Roach. And I can recall my father extolling and quite frankly, beating up on John Coltrane to push the envelope. And of course, we know John Coltrane certainly pushed the envelope. So I feel very, very privileged to be here today in this particular place. It's, it's extraordinary for me. This is the spirit. This is the spirit of the Thelonious Monk Institute. And I know my father. Well, you know, to tell you the truth, because he was my father, <laughs> and it was very, very difficult to predict Thelonious Monk, I will say, I think my father would be so proud of our accomplishments. I really do. <laughs> Thelonious, uh, he was the high priest of bebop and one of the most inventive pianists of any musical genre with a vision deeply rooted in tradition, but also way ahead of his time. He made a profound contribution to the jazz repertoire, his unique improvisational style and his composition, compositional genius have influenced and been studied by musicians, actors, poets, dancers, visual artists, writers, and uh, you know, we cannot leave out someone who's very, very important to the Institute, athletes in the person of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So it's been the full spectrum. Danilo Perez has perfectly blended the spirit of Thelonious with his individual Pan American warmth, sensibility, and Latin soul. Please welcome Danilo Perez. Richard Bona, Jack DeJanet, and Joe Lovano to perform Thelonious Monk's classic, Think of One. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
Sharing a rich and legendary history, the blues has left an indelible imprint on jazz. The blues has been the emotional and spiritual touchstone for jazz musicians around the world. And many would agree that the first commandment for every jazz musician is to learn to master the blues. I, <laughs> I was raised in Mississippi, and I currently live there. I have a blues club in Clarksdale, which along with the Dockery Farms is the storied birthplace of the Delta Blues. So the blues has played an instrumental role in my life. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now, please welcome Robert Cray, Susan Tedeschi, Derek Trucks, George Duke, Christian McBride, and Benny Kulauta to perform the classic Howlin' Wolf blues tune, How Many More Years?
laid in the ground. Please welcome Angelique Kijo and Lionel Lueke. Good evening, everybody. You having good time so far? All right. So I'm going to teach you the song we're going to sing. Those who have seen me perform here know the song. The one that doesn't know the song is easy. It's two words. It's a blessing song. Today is a special day. Because finally, the United Nations is recognizing, a part of the United Nations is recognizing the fact that we artists, we are the ambassador of peace. It's about time we come in here, fully recognize and help do what we can. And this song is just doing so. Jazz has come from Africa. I'm from Africa, from the motherland. And we are all Africans tonight, so we're going to sing African language. And the song goes like this. Ashe mama, ashe mama, Africa. Ashe mama, ashe mama, Africa. Let me hear you. Come on, don't be shy. You ain't doing it right for me yet. So we're going to go back. Don't rush it. Just push it right there. Okay? One, two, three, go. Ashe mama, ashe mama, Africa. Ashe mama, So when I say let's go, please sing loud because I have the microphone and I have to sing on top of your voices. You ready for me? Are you really ready? All right, let's do it. Here we go. Show. 
A member of Hollywood royalty, he's roamed the streets of San Francisco and ruled on Wall Street. Please welcome actor, producer, director, and two-time Academy Award winner, Michael Douglas. I did a, um, I did a double take when I learned that I was going to introduce our next guest uh, because my father, Kirk Douglas, had a profound influence on his life. At age 14, after seeing the film Young Man with a Horn, it was a thinly veiled story modeled on the life of the legendary cornet player, Big Spiderbeck, our next guest was inspired to pick up a trumpet and hone his talent. He is considered one of South Africa's most influential individuals because his early protest music portrayed the struggles, the passion against apartheid regime, which mirrored and captured the disillusionment of an entire nation. And through the trumpet, his heartache and suffering was enormous comfort to millions of oppressed souls and gave voice to the revolution. These conditions ultimately led him out of the country and his triumphant career was launched. He symbolizes what the power and influence of jazz can achieve. Please 
welcome a true citizen of the world who perform his chart-topping hit, Grazing in the Grass, Hugh Masekela. And he will be joined, he will be joined by the legendary, the one and only, Stevie Wonder.
Please welcome UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador, Chairman of the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz, and 14-time Grammy Award winner, Herbie Hancock. Standing here tonight is the culmination of my career-long dream for people living on all seven continents to devote one day a year to celebrate the music that has shaped my life. With an open heart, I offer my thanks to the entire worldwide jazz community of musicians, educators, and fans, to UNESCO and to the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz for helping make today, International Jazz Day, a reality. Music is powerful. As I travel around the world, I've been fortunate to mentor scores of young artists and have witnessed firsthand incredible transformations in mind and body and spirit. Not only does understanding and learning an instrument increase cooperation, self-confidence, intuition, and creativity, but developing a love of music inspires and brings entire communities together. The best way to change the world is through education. And this idea continues to motivate me. And with the help of UNESCO, and the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz, I'm pleased to announce a new initiative called Math, Science, and Music. <laughs> this program will employ the comprehension, strength, and energy of music to enhance math and science studies and encourage young people to use technology to help build our future. Gather, gathering together in this esteemed General Assembly Hall at the United Nations, where countries put aside their many differences and unite for the betterment of humankind, symbolizes the power of all music to cross cultural boundaries, making our world more equitable, secure, and peaceful. It doesn't matter where you're born or the color of your skin or how you worship. Through our instruments and songs, musicians of all ages tell stories bursting with passion about every conceivable subject, blending ideas, exchanging experiences, and speaking profoundly through notes, melodies, and sounds, encompassing and embracing the universal language of goodwill and compassion. We must follow the ideals of music let us all join forces to ensure the health and well-being of our planet and break down the barriers that stand in our way of universal peace, understanding, equality, cooperation, and communication. To illustrate this universal concept in action, let's listen to the disparate souls enjoy a gorgeous musical conversation filled with vision and interesting ideas. From all corners of the globe, please welcome on piano, Tarek Yamani.
ทำร้ายวันอ่านอันเบสริชาร์ดบอร์นาจากแคมรอนอันดรัมส์วินิคอลายูตาจากประเทศอเมริกาและอันทาบลาสซาคีร์ฮุสเซนจากอินเดียอันเทนนิสแอคส์ทรอยรับเบอร์สจากออสเตรเลีย On alto sax, Tenika Postma from the Netherlands, and on soprano sax, my closest personal friend and collaborator, the legendary Wayne Shorter. They're going to perform John Coltrane's "India."
please welcome Grammy Award winner Esperanza Spalding. Ella Fitzgerald. She could break your heart, send chills up and down your spine, or push you out of your seat and onto the dance floor. Having one of the most distinct and memorable voices in jazz history, Ella's phrasing was flawless and her tone was clear as a bell. Scat singing was her forte and her ability to imitate the instruments in the jazz band is legendary. Ella was the first lady of song and an inspiration to countless jazz vocalists over the decades. And now, please welcome Shaka Khan. to be here tonight with some of my favorite guys in the world. Take it. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Please welcome Hiromi Uyara, Terrence Blanchard, and Ely Djibri.
His name is synonymous with the word icon. His name is still synonymous with the word icon. An extraordinary 20th century composer, some say the greatest of all time. He assembled and perpetuated for over 50 years the most significant orchestra in jazz history. His rise to fame expanded the evolution of jazz to a popular art form. He attracted the top artists of the day and his mastery of the piano accompanied the best and the brightest. His gentlemanly style earned him the nickname Duke. And honor Duke Ellington, please welcome the dynamic Dee Dee Bridgewater singing his classic Cotton Tail, joined by Shankar Madhadavan and Esperanza Spaulding.
two-time Academy Award winner and 2009 Kennedy Center honoree, please welcome Robert De Niro. Pops, New Orleans' most famous trumpeter taught the world to swing. An international ambassador of jazz, his natural, innovative performance style revolutionized the music and is one that is widely imitated but never duplicated. Coupled with his instantly recognizable deep, rich, and gravelly tenor voice, he defined the role of a jazz soloist. Tony Bennett once remarked, the bottom line of any country is what we did to contribute to the world. We contributed Louis Armstrong. Satch composed dozens of songs that have become jazz standards, recorded hits for five decades, and was a gifted actor appearing in over 30 films. Please welcome Wynton Marsalis, who will... who will perform Louis Armstrong's St. James Infirmary.
performing Louis Armstrong's What a Wonderful World, please welcome Esperanza Spaulding and Jimmy East.
Earlier this morning, the very first International Jazz Day was launched with a sunrise concert in Congo Square, the birthplace of jazz. Herbie Hancock was there and he was joined by thousands of students from around the world in a special performance of his Grammy Hall of Fame composition, Watermelon Man. Please join us in experiencing that special historic moment.
performing Leonard Bernstein's Tonight from West Side Story, please welcome Lang Lang and Herbie Hancock.
This past Friday, International Jazz Day festivities kicked off with special programs at UNESCO's headquarters in Paris. Here's a peek at some of those exciting highlights. There's no question about the fact that jazz is an international language. Individuals in various countries, and of course, including France, heard the music and they felt the music. So the music doesn't have a boundary, doesn't have a national boundary. Even though it was born in one country, as it grew and expanded and became uh, a young person and became an adult. It traveled as we travel from country to country, uh, spoke to different people, almost like the human spirit, speaking to every human being, regardless of language and regardless of culture. I believe we have an incredible day today, a day of concerts, seminars, workshops, master classes led by the greatest names of contemporary jazz. Jazz connects people. This is the message of the first International Jazz Day. It is a message that goes out most especially to young people, to the younger generation who are rising up, who have so much to discover still in this life with the help of jazz. So, long live jazz and long live music. Thank you all for coming. classique, j'ai une partition. Je commence avec la partition et c'est la partition qui est un peu le, le guide pour moi. Euh, mais là, dans le jazz, comme il n'y a pas toujours une partition, euh, j'étais obligée de, de, de être dans cette tradition euh, orale en écoutant les, les, les instrumentistes. Si quelqu'un montre un peu de, de talent et puis euh, il travaille avec un professeur, peut-être ça peut marcher. Mais pour moi, on est né, soit on est né avec de talent ou pas. Et dans mon cas, euh, j'ai toujours chanté. Moi, j'ai jamais fait les études de la musique. Euh, je peux pas lire la musique. Euh, si on me met des partitions devant moi, je dis oh c'est Mimi. Montre-moi la mélodie et je compte toujours sur mes oreilles. But it's fantastic, though. But I, I love that. I love that song. Alors voilà, vous l'avez compris, Gra And Larry I got Graham. to play in, in Japan last year. Larry Graham was my special guest, and, and we got to play the song together. Ooh, what a frill. It sounded like elephants. <laughs> With its strong emphasis on percussion, its danceable beats, its swivel your hips rhythms and fiery emotional ballads, Latin jazz has powerful and spirited Afro-Cuban and Brazilian influences a popular post-swing jazz style pioneered by the big bands of Dizzy Gillespie and Machito, the art form created in New York in the 30s and 40s transcended racial lines between Latin, black, and white musicians. Please welcome Candido, Sheila E., Bobby Sanabria, 
and Quarteto Ache. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Before we begin, I'd like to say one thing. The great Art Blakey from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, one of the greatest drummers that ever lived, once said, any place where jazz is played is a sacred place. So we thank you for coming to church tonight.
Cida y Candido, Enrique Hanene on the piano, Andy Yula on the bass, Peter Brennan saxophones and flute. My name is Bobby Sanabria. Long live America's greatest art form, and I'm talking about North Central and South America and the Caribbean jazz. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Esperanza Spaulding and Stevie Wonder.
beautiful I could see it. Uh huh, yeah. Uh -huh. As the sun sets on the first International Jazz Day, I think we all agree that tonight's concert will go down in history. It'll go down in history as a prime example of using music to cross cultural boundaries. I want to thank all of you in the audience and all the fans listening on radios, on the internet, and watching on television. A most heartfelt thanks for your support, for embracing the magic of the music and recognizing that jazz makes a profound difference in all of our lives. I look forward to celebrating the second International Jazz Day with you next year. And now, we have one more surprise in store. I'd like to invite all the musicians and singers who performed this evening to join me and Stevie Wonder for one last song. From Songs in the Key of Life, Stevie's hit tune as
Ladies and gentlemen, from all the musicians, our Goodwill Ambassador Herbie Hancock, UNESCO, the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz, and myself, Mark Ruffin from Sirius XM, happy International Jazz Day. Thank you and good night. <laughs>